I'm back and I was just think, thinking about sexual assault. After I finished the show, I finally did finish the show, by the way. And it seems like it's going to be another part to, um, it's going to be another part to Auntie and Nisi. Um, but I'm laying here and I'm just thinking about, oh God, did that thing just start playing late? Okay, in case you didn't hear me because the music was up a little bit, but I'm laying here and I'm thinking about sexual assault. Um, you know, when you look at the definition of sexual assault, it's basically saying, let me read what it says in the, God, according to law. Let me see what it says. According to law. According to the law, sexual assault and harassment have been in the news a lot. Okay, but what does it mean? Hold up, y'all. <laughs> see, I told y'all this is real life. I don't have it all together all the time. Um, Let me go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia. And, you know, they don't really say Wikipedia is a good source sometimes. But, to me, it's been dead on the money. A whole lot of times, especially when I was in college. It helped me out a whole lot. So, according to Wikipedia, sexual assault is an act in which a person sexually touches another person without that person's consent or coerces or physically forces a person to engage in a sexual act against their will. It is a form of sexual violence, which includes rape. Forced vaginal, anal, or oral penetration, a drug facilitated sexual assault, groping, child abuse, or the torture of the person in a sexual manner. And, you know, that's just a little reading on it. But more and more cases are coming forward since the Me Too movement came out. And I actually pray for that. I pray for more people to come forth, especially in the entertainment business, because you have influence. You have influence over the public, and whatever they see you do, that's what they're going to do. So um, when I got sexually assaulted March 15th, 2017, my prayer was, Lord, let more people come forth and tell their story about what happened. What happened to me, I did not ask for that. I sure didn't. I was at a hotel in Sanford, North Carolina, and I was getting ready to go to church early in the morning. And then got my little dress on and stuff, and I'm just standing there putting water in my car, and I'm grabbed from behind. And this guy is telling me what all he's going to do. He's taking my hand, putting it on his private spot, grabbing my breast. So much is taking place in, at one time, you know, and then... I'm hollering, no, stop, stop, don't do this. I'm screaming for help, and a woman walks right by me. You hear me? Listen, a woman saw me asking, screaming for help, and she walked right by me, and she in the church, too. (laughs) And she in the church, and I ran up with that woman later on. um, She sings in a group, and I didn't say anything to her. I didn't say anything to her. Because I understand how sometimes people don't want to step in and help people when they see them going through. So I just left that part alone. But I couldn't get it out of my head either that she just walked right past me knowing, you know, that I'm a woman just like she is. Could have called for help or something. But anyway, the guy grabbed me and he pulled me into his room. Because y'all know how these little cheap hotels are. You know, I'm not in the Marriott or anything. I'm just in a basic, um, what was it, basic quality inn. I have not been there since, by the way. Quality inn, they said they had cameras. And then when the cops talked to them, the cameras were turned off. And, um, you know, they came up with their excuses. So, what what I'm saying here is that guy grabbed me so quick. And in a matter of seconds, this guy had a heart on like we had been sitting there talking the whole time. In just a matter of seconds, y'all. A matter of seconds. So, 
And he had pulled me in his room that quick. And he was so strong. I'll never forget his strength. And he was so tall. And his hand was around my neck. I had bruises around my neck. Um, I remember struggling. And I remember him throwing me down on the bed. And, I'm, and, and taking out his thing. And I was like, you know, you don't have to do this. I know you don't want to get in trouble. At first, I was panicking. And then I... Then I don't know the the um, God in me took over and was like, it was like, sir, you don't really want to do this. You don't want to get in trouble for this. And when I started calling on Jesus because he didn't stop, I called Jesus name three times and he let me go. He let me go. I finally got my way out of that room. Um, I was shook up. I was shook up, but I was so scared on the inside to even come out. I was so scared on the inside to even come out and go back to my car. I was that scared. And, you know, it's a, something that you never really get over. You learn how to get through. And I don't mess. If I'm having a day where I'm reliving that. I'll go ahead and deal with that. I do not hold it in. I don't try to act like, you know, it didn't happen or nothing like that. I go ahead and deal with whatever I'm feeling. That's what I do. I'll go ahead and deal with it. And a lot of days I can I can make it like that. And then I have the days where I just cry sometimes because I'm like, why did that have to happen to me? Because now, um, on top of being a rape victim... Now, um, you know, I got that going on and, and it, it, it takes a toll on me because I don't want to be touched by anybody. And I had to learn how to hug again without getting these nasty feelings all over me and realize that everybody's not bad. I mean, just for simple, like my grandchildren, it, you, you know, it took me. My oldest granddaughter is seven years old. It took the actually third grandchild to be born before I could like give them hugs and stuff like that. I mean, that's just how deep this can be. And the more I got in God, the more it helped me. And I had to fight through the feelings that I would have whenever my granddaughters would hug me because I don't want nobody touching up against my breast. I don't want nobody touching up against my arm or my neck. Those are my sensitive spots that kind of trigger me off from being sexually abused like that and assaulted. And like my legs, I don't like nobody touching my legs, especially my butt. I have a thing. If somebody touches my butt, you know, to be honest, <laughs> I can't say how I would respond, but I'm trying to work on that. Because even when people have brushed up against me accidentally, I have been known to slap people who just touch up on me like that. Now, it hasn't happened to me in a while, but I know um, before I became single, that happened a lot. And, and I just didn't want nobody, I just didn't want nobody touching me. It just feels nasty. And I would have to take showers over and over over and over after somebody touched me even if they just little bu bu bumped up against me you know it wouldn't even have to take much it wouldn't take much if they just a little bump I would have to come home and I would have to take showers and, and wash those clothes over and over again because I couldn't take it so nobody can ever say what, it, what it's like for a person that sexually assaulted, assaulted has been through that nobody can say what they will do or what they will not do because of what has happened to me. I'm very protective over my granddaughters. Very protective. And everything that they named in the sexual assault, in that definition, all that they named, like if I see somebody near my granddaughters, I'll be like, no, y'all can't do that. Y'all can't do that. And... <laughs> Even when they're playing, I have to catch myself sometimes and be like, they're just little girls. They, it's, it's not, how can I say it? They're just little girls. Um, you know, I can't take out on them what I've been through. 
So I can't tell them, you know, don't play with baby dolls or, you know, don't walk holding hands and stuff like that. And before I used to would do that, but I've been working on it with some therapy and stuff and I'm getting better at that because the least little thing triggers you. It really does. And it takes, it takes strong women and men to live their life that have been through sexual abuse or some type of sexual assault. I would just say right now, would I teach my granddaughters and my children? Would I have always taught my children? Because I was raped when I was 13 years old by three people. And they were people that I knew at the same time. So it's kind of like a gang rape. That's what they called it. Um, and one was my cousin. No, two were my cousin. Or was it three? All three were my cousin. Come to think about it. They were like distant, cous- distant cousins. Um, and that happened. And I was like, wow. I never dealt with that either. Till I got grown. When I got grown, that's when I started dealing with that. But you'll never know what someone is holding in. And that's why I can't say those women that are coming forth now, years later, I can't say that that didn't happen or why didn't they come forth earlier. Because I did not come out of my shadow about being raped. I didn't even bring it up. I didn't even bring it up until I was about near 30 years old. I never talked about it. I told my sisters, y'all know this happened. Do not bring this up anymore. They never brought it up anymore. And that was it. We left it. We left it alone. That was it. Nobody brought it up to me because they knew how I felt about it. Um, my sisters, because they was around me at the time. But it would be years later. A decade later. Two decades later. Correction, two decades later. I was 13 when it happened, and I was 30-something before I could talk about it publicly or even talk about it to my family like that. I was 30-something years old. So I can't say what those women ain't going through or why they all of a sudden decide to come out now because they might have just now got to a place where they have matured on the inside from the pain because it's a pain that is not verbal. It's not a verbal pain. It's not a verbal pain. So it, it can't be really spoken out. It just has to be dealt with from the inside. And until that place on the inside is healed. And sometimes it takes healing on its own. It don't matter how much people talk to you. It don't matter how much therapy you take. It takes healing on the inside. On its own before you can come forth and say, hey, this is what happened to me. Sometimes it's just that one moment where where something happens in your life that triggers it and says, you're strong enough now. Go ahead and say something about this. And for me, that's what happened. I don't know about those other women that I have been seeing in the news, but that's what happened to me. Something happened in my life one day. I matured in a certain area. On my life, and then all of a sudden, I was like, you know what? I want to tell other people about this. I don't want nobody else going through this. Although I know I can't stop every case, but I can talk about it. I can talk about it now. And so I choose to talk about it a lot, even before these, even before the Bill Cosby situation, the Me Too movement. I have been talking about this probably since I've been on Facebook since 2009, and. I'm telling you, it's just, it's just something how even some of the women can sit back and say, well, why they wait this long to come for? Well, you don't know what they were going through. You don't know what part in their life actually got them to where they are now that they could speak. And yes, we do have some people that lie. We do. We have people that lie on others just to hurt their characters or whatever. But there are just some people who cannot say nothing. They can go to therapy all day long. And they still will be holding this in their heart. It takes a certain time and situation and maturity to come into their life to where they can speak on it. Where they can speak on it without um, 
Oh, shoot. Why my phone always need charging? <coughs> it takes a certain point, a certain milestone in...